Well, we are we were aware of the situation of uh, Sombat Somporn, a uh, senior uh, social activist, well-respected social activist uh, uh, from Laos who disappeared in the capital Vientiane uh, just over a month ago on the 15th of December last year. Uh, uh, the, the situation is uh, concerned not only for people in Laos, but for the region as a whole, and for people from various sectors. Um, there was a uh, really limited uh, progress and information that we know uh, since uh, the, the, the disappearance of uh, Sombat Somporn. Uh, only that we uh, all saw the video footage, uh, CCTV footage, that was released uh, only two days after the incident. I will not go into the details, but then, um, on like all concern is that the, there was a request of the international organizing committees of the Asia People People Forum, uh, which recently took place in Vientiane. Um, uh, uh, a delegation of three parliamentarians from ASEAN region uh, have gone to Laos PDR and met with senior government officials and member of Laos National Assembly, hmm? and uh, uh, the the delegation. Uh, comprised of Dr. Walden Bello, member of the parliament, the Philippines, chairman of the committees on overseas workers' affairs, member of the committees on uh, foreign yeah. affairs of the House of Representatives of the Philippines and author of several human rights bills. Uh, secondly, we have Madame Lily Wahid, member of parliament, Indonesia, and member of ASEAN inter Parliament of Myanmar caucus. We also have Mr. Shao Santiago, member of the parliament, Malaysia, and board member of the AEPF. Uh, I will proceed by request uh, Dr. Walden Bello uh, to facilitate the, the session and the report from the uh, finding uh, uh, which uh, the, the, the delegation just came back from Laos uh, just yesterday. Walden. Uh, thank you. Uh Thank you, uh, Jack Chai, and uh, good morning uh, to all of you. Um, I have um, prepared a statement that will be available right after I uh, speak. Um, and uh, my fellow members of the delegation will also give their own uh, impressions of the trip. The only thing that we would like to note beforehand is that Mr. Charles Santiago from Malaysia will have to leave by 11.15 since he has to catch a flight to Kuala Lumpur. Um, so um, we are members of a delegation of ASEAN parliamentarians that visited the Lao People's Democratic Republic to investigate the appearance of Sombat Sompon, the prominent Lao leader of civil society from January 13 to 15. We went at the request of the Asia-Europe People's Forum, AEPF. The delegation was assembled in 10 days' time, owing to the urgency of the matter. Despite the short notice, high officials of the Lao PDR met with us, and we were very grateful for this. We had a very frank exchange of views in a cordial atmosphere. We told the officials we met that the disappearance of Sombat is an ASEAN concern, because Sombat is an ASEAN figure whose work has touched the lives of many people in Laos and other countries in ASEAN. His work in rural development was a model emulated throughout the region. Moreover, at a time when ASEAN is coming together as a real community in the eyes of the world, his disappearance reflects badly not only on Laos but on the whole ASEAN community. The officials we met acknowledge that the disappearance of Sombat is a blow to the reputation of the Lao PDR and that it could not have come at a worse time. Coming on the heels of the countries joining the World Trade Organization and hosting the Asia-Europe Leaders Meeting, ASEM. They also all acknowledge that Sombat was an important civil society leader who has contributed much to Laos development working alongside government with many of them saying they knew him personally. They also noted the special responsibility of the government to solve Mr. Sombat's disappearance 
since the Lao PDR has just signed the Convention on the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearance, being the fourth country in Asia to do so. One of the Lao government leaders we met, Mr. Hung Sabat Bupa, President of the National Committee for Human Rights in the Office of the President, acknowledged that Sombat's disappearance is not the first case of disappearance in Laos. He cited the case of the sister of the wife of the former ambassador of the Lao PDR to Indonesia, who vanished five years ago and has not yet been found. We have stressed to the officials we met that this case of the disappearance of the sister of the wife of the former ambassador to Indonesia shows the importance of acting swiftly to find the disappeared for the longer he or she is not located, the greater the chances that he will not surface. We are very grateful for the meetings and the frank exchange of views, but we are far from satisfied with the answers we got, and we told this to our hosts. We were told that after a month of investigation, the only thing that has been established is that the police had nothing to do with the disappearance. We told them that this was not credible and that if we accepted this as at its face value as to the progress of the case, we ourselves would lose credibility. We were told that Sombat was kidnapped, but we said that if this was done by criminal elements, the family would by now have received a demand for ransom. No such note specifying an amount has been received. We received no satisfactory answer to this. We noted discrepancies in our host's accounts of the circumstances of the abduction. Most of the officials we met said there was no evidence that Sombat got into the pickup truck that appeared in the CCTV footage after his jeep was stopped. Yet, Mr. Sakayane Sisovong, the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, said Sombat voluntarily boarded that vehicle. Considering the experience of other ASEAN countries where abductions have taken place, like the Philippines and Indonesia, we ask about the possibility that some section of the government or rogue elements in the government might have carried out an abduction that the rest of the government did not know about. This query did not elicit an answer from the officials we spoke to, except from Permanent Secretary Sisovong, who said it was a good suggestion. We express our hope to him that the authorities would indeed look into this angle. We ask if Sombat's disappearance might have had something to do with the Asia-Europe People's Forum and the expulsion of Annie-Sophie Grindros, the country director of the Swiss agency Helvetas. All we got in answer to this question was that Anne-Sophie was acting against Laos's interests. There was a denial that Sombat's disappearance was connected to her expulsion or the holding of the AEPF. In short, our visit raised more questions than answers. It is indeed possible that the officials we met, high though they are in the government and National Assembly, do not know what happened to Sombat. Thus, it is all the more important that the highest state authorities direct the police, security, and intelligence agencies to focus their investigation on all possibilities, including the possibility that Mr. Sombat may have been abducted by elements, possibly rogue elements, within the government itself. A line of investigation that we strongly suggested and which was accepted as a good suggestion by the Permanent Secretary of Foreign Affairs. In conclusion, we would like to thank the government and the National Assembly of the Lao PDR for meeting and having a frank exchange of views with us. We especially appreciate the fact that our visit was not taken as an intrusion into the so sovereignty of the Lao PDR, but as a legitimate expression of fraternal ASEAN concern. And that our suggestion that the objects of investigation include possible sections or rogue elements in the government was accepted as a viable course of action. Let me reiterate what both sides repeated throughout the talks, that the immediate surfacing of Mr. Sombat is in the interest of all parties, of Mr. Sombat and his family, of the Lao PDR, and of ASEAN. Thank you very much. And um, um, MP uh, Santiago would uh, now give uh, a few comments. Uh, thanks, Walden, and good morning. Um, I think... Uh, Walden's summary in, in general gives a, a fair overview of what transpired in the last two days in uh, Vientiane. But let me just focus on two sets of issues, one relating to the Asia-Europe People's Forum, uh, and the second involves the status of the investigation. 
Yesterday marked the first month of Sombat's disappearance. Uh, he was taken in, uh, he disappeared uh, on December 15th, and yesterday was December 15th. What uh, a development that took place yesterday was, his wife was asked to go for, uh, to talk to the police as part of the investigation process. She turned up at the police station at 9 a.m., and the questions they had for her after one month of investigation was, when did you get married to Sombat? How did you guys meet each other? Uh, and where do you guys stay and whether you have children? And, uh, and that was the end of the story. Though. So she came back and she was outraged by the questioning that had taken place. And number two, it was the questioning was done, or, or the investigation was done by the lowest ranking officer at that particular police station. Though. Now, this raises fundamental questions. Though. First, it raises the notion that after one month, you call a wife and tell her, when did you guys get married? Uh, when did you meet for the first time? Which actually shows that the police and the civil administration have absolutely no interest, no political will to get to the root of this problem. No. Absolutely no interest and absolutely no political will uh, to resolve this issue, except saying in all our meetings that we want to get to the root of this problem because the credibility of Laos has been hit. Uh, and therefore, we want to solve this problem as soon as possible. But when asked about the investigation itself, there's absolutely stonewalling and the same script being repeated all the time in different ways uh, in all the meetings, except in one or two cases where one of the uh, uh, senior, senior officials of the Foreign Affairs Ministry uh, moved out or leaked outside of the script that already had been written, which uh, Walden had already raised on. So the first point I would like to note is that the government, it appears, the government has no political will in order to resolve this issue. Though. Having said that, uh, let me just add a further point. Now, one of the reasons why the script is the same uh, and could be highly possible because the script is being given to them by somebody else. Uh, somebody is telling them, say, hey, repeat this to all the guys that are going to come to see you because the civilian component of government really has no idea what has transpired though. Uh, and therefore, we have, in, we have impressed, and not once, but the most harshest way that the investigation must now move at the highest level of military as well as the police because it appears that the civilian government really has no idea what is going on except the military uh, faction of the government though. That's number one. Number two, uh, the disappearance of Sombad uh, comes, uh, the background to that is the Asia-Europe People's Forum, which took place uh, in October 2012. Sombad uh, was the leader of the National Organizing Committee of the Asia-Europe People's Forum, who together with the International Organizing Committee worked uh, towards organizing this event. Uh, um, the other members of the organizing committee include members of FOCUS of the Global South. Uh, Dorothy is also part of the IOC. Uh, we had a series of meetings uh, in Vientiane the last two years uh, with the government and, uh, and all decisions were made with the government. Though. But let me just point out a couple of events that uh, to explain why Sombat went missing. Though. One, at the conference itself, uh, on the first or second day of the conference, when a young Lao woman had raised the issue of land grabs in uh, Vientiane, she was intimidated in front of everybody. Though she was intimidated in front of everybody, they made her cry, and she had to she had to leave. She had to leave the uh, meeting and to go back to her village. And from what we understand, when she went back to the village, the intimidation continued. Now, that intimidation on the INGOs and the local uh, NOCs, National Organizing Committee members, and their work is still going on till today. Uh, we had met some of the uh, international, organization, uh, international NGOs that are based in Laos, and this intimidation persists even till today, though. So something that started in October is still going on. That's number one. Number two. Um, it's, uh, the, this, the background to that also is the forced deportation of uh, Anne-Sophie, who's also here, 
um, she she was forced out of um, of uh, of Laos, uh, and and when we raised the issue of why she was forced out, the answer was she had crossed the line. She was working against the interest of uh, of Laos, and then the question was posed: Did Sombat to uh, work against the interests of Laos? And the answer was quite clear: No, Lao, uh, Sombat is part of the Lao family. You know. Is part of the Lao family. So if he's part of the Lao family, why is he why is he gone disappearing? Why has he disappeared? No. So this is the question that none of them can really answer no, because they don't have the answer. The answer is with the military faction or higher officials of the uh, of the Communist Party or the members of the Political Bureau. No. It's they who must answer this question. So uh, I just uh, would like to conclude by saying that um, and also support the uh, issue raised by uh, Dr. Walvin Bello that there are more questions now than before our trip. Uh, and the questions can only be answered by the highest level of the Communist Party or the member of the, members of the Pulji Bureau and no longer the civilian government. Though. The civilian government really is going around in circles and trying to explain. And in going around, the, going around in circles and trying to explain and give an answer, they're making too many mistakes. That ex quite exposes the argument that they are making. So I will stop at that and maybe take questions shortly. Thank you, <coughs> Thank you Charles and Warden. Good morning to all of you. My both colleague has already uh, give you the situation uh, there in, in Vientiane until yesterday. I noted that the uh, National Assembly uh, we met the the president of the national uh, the vice president of national assembly and they are they were refusing that uh, the gov their government is uh, responsible for the disappearance of uh, sombat and also when we met the president of the human rights uh, commission in uh, in laos also he mentioned just uh, uh, around that uh, Sombat has been kidnapped, and then uh, they do not they do not know anything about uh, his uh, condition to today. But when we met uh, the permanent secretary of uh, the Foreign Affairs Minist Ministry, it is rather open that uh, he mentioned that maybe uh, Sombat is still alive and maybe uh, around the sea, the river uh, Mekong, but it is not, uh, not, not exactly he mentioned like that after we, 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 we uh, talked to him with such a uh, many sample of uh, the condition in Laos. And then uh, afterward, Many times that uh, this, uh, the secretary mentioned that they will cooperate uh, to take the solution of uh, where is the Sombat uh, and how they can find them, and they will cooperate with us uh, to give us give us information of uh, what they get, what information they get. In this case, I think that uh, we cannot hope too much uh, to the government of uh, Laos, but still, I have the conclusion that um, Laos also uh, still scared that the uh, international uh, pressure will be uh, uh, taken to them. And then I think that's uh, the time that uh, we, all of us syner uh, synergies uh, our energy to uh, push Lao uh, by uh, doing many um, meeting like this to press them. After I reach in Jakarta, I will go to the Asian Human Rights uh, Head Office in Jakarta and report them about our uh, vis uh, our visit to Lao, and then we will uh, collect the signature of. Uh, the Interparliament ASEAN from Indonesia, from uh, 
Philippines and from Malaysia. So that we we want Asian human rights decided uh, uh, something to push uh, the Lao government. Today, I think this is the step that uh, we have to start the pressure, the international pressure to the law of government. I'm uh, um, uh, one of the members of uh, EIPMC, Asian Interparliament for Myanmar Caucus, and I see uh, Mr. Uh, Kroasek is uh, with us. Uh, and then uh, I want to suggest to the EIPMC not only uh, not only um, uh, take attention on the Myanmar, but uh, maybe it is uh, wider that we can uh, make our activity for the whole case in uh, Asia, not only in Myanmar, so that uh, we uh, make a step together hand in hand. And I think that uh, if we make it, then Laos can be uh, the Laos government can be uh, pressed to make a further step uh, as fast as possible to know where is uh, Sombat uh, now. And also, we of course hope that Sombat is alive safely somewhere, and we have to work in as fast as possible to find what really happened with Sombat. Thank you. Um, well, uh, thank you, Lily. Thank you, Charles. Uh, if there are any um, questions from our friends in the media, we'd be very happy to answer them at this point. Maybe, uh, Jack Chai, you can, you can moderate. Uh, as I mentioned uh, from the beginning, that uh, Charles Santiago, uh, we need to leave uh, soon after. So maybe if there's questions towards uh, uh, Charles, uh, maybe you can uh, direct to Charles and then Lily, because she, Lily needs to also leave soon after also. Okay, so the floor is open. Uh, Arnaud Debus with Liberation newspaper. Uh, what makes you think that there could be a connection between the disappearance of Mr. Sambat on the expulsion of uh, Mrs. Anne-Sophie Gendros? Uh, both uh, Madam Anne-Sophie and Sombat were part of the National Organizing Committee of the Asia Europe People's Forum. Uh, they, are, they were members of the National Organizing Committee, means they represent the various groups in, uh, uh, in, in Vientiane. Number two, uh, the lady who cried, the lady who was uh, abused by the intelligence authorities uh, when she had raised the issue of land grabs in, uh, in Vientiane, um, was actually brought, the group that brought them uh, in for the meeting was, a uh, was linked to uh, Anne Sophie's uh, organization based in Vientiane. Also, uh, I think at the Asia Europe People's Forum, uh, Mr. Sombat had, uh, had a series of consultation in about 16 different provinces in uh, Vientian. Uh, and number two, uh, he put forward the Lao vision, uh, which actually uh, talked about, which could have been interpreted as providing an alternative vision uh, for people uh, in, in Vientian or in Laos as a whole. And it was very successful. And some of the issues that were raised by that consultation uh, was issues of poverty, issues of income distribution, issues of land grab, uh, issues of minorities, and so on and so forth. Now, this must have rubbed the, the, uh, the uh, senior members of the party in the wrong way. Though. So, And also, maybe it is a way of sending a message to the civil society, both foreign as local operating in uh, Vientiane, that the government will not stand for this, uh, will not support these kinds of questioning uh, and, and organizations raising these concerns. So that could have prompted it as well. I would just like to add that um, this was uh, raised very frankly at the meetings in uh, the way that uh, Mr. Santiago has raised it. All those points were raised, and so this is this is uh, this was an issue that was brought to them very forthrightly. 
Uh, because at that time, uh, the permanent secretary mentioned uh, several times that uh, maybe he's uh, crossing the line. That is uh, uh, completely clear for us that uh, it must be connected with the uh, Mr. and uh, Madam and Sophie already done. Hi, my name is Gabrielle Paluch. I'm with Voice of America. Um, this question is directed at anybody on the panel. You've mentioned um, a little bit that there's a connection between Ansafi Grindos and Sumbath's disappearance, but do you know any other details about what could have possibly motivated the people who took him away? Um, if you know know any other details, specifically, you know, which of his actions could have made somebody angry or whose toes he was stepping on? Well, I think um, um, I think. Let me just say that that um, we did raise these issues of um, uh, motivation. We did raise the issue of the way that the incident took place within a police station. Uh, we did raise the issue of um, the circumstances. Um, surrounding the, the abduction, especially the, what was shown in the CCTV uh, footage. We did raise the issue very strongly that have they investigated possible sections of the government that the civilian government does not know uh, about. And um, so we, we posed a whole range of possible elements that might have had an interest uh, in order to, 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 to push the government to, to investigate the range of possible actors uh, in this case, uh, including uh, the possibility of rogue elements or even some sections of the government. So um, uh, rather, than, um, uh, at, rather than answering about uh, what motivations there could be, um, uh, for this, uh, I think the best answer we could give you is that we ask the Lao government to look at all these possibilities and to please come out with a more definitive answer within the shortest period of time possible. We expressed um, our concern uh, about the um, the swiftness with which the, all of us were waiting for an answer because um, they said uh, when they explained the legal process that within two months time um, there should be a result of the investigation but that there could be three separate extensions that can be made. Uh, we expressed concern about this because two months plus three extensions would amount to about two years. And we made it very clear that that length of time of two years, which is legally provided by the Constitution, by the processes of Laos, which we respect, nevertheless uh, would not be something that um, people throughout the world and the region interested in Sombat's case would be willing to, to accept as a length of time for an investigation. Let me be very clear, not, it was not said that it would take two years, but it was just explained that the legal process provides for a maximum length of two years. Uh, I'd just like to just take up uh, a point further. Um, some of us raised the issue of uh, the CCTV. Uh, and I said in most countries, uh, as soon as the intelligence networks look at a person and you know, they know exactly who this person is linked with, it's quite common that the intelligence can easily uh, locate the, uh, by looking at the individual, they will know who, who he represents or who he works with. Uh, I said in most countries, this thing would have been wrapped up by two days, uh, maybe on the same day. Given that you know the number of the vehicle, you know the person, the face is also quite clear. Uh, why are you not moving on this? Though? 
the answer is quite telling though. Uh, and the answer was our technology is poor. Actually, this is not true because the, 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 the CCTV was very clear. It's very clear. So therefore, uh, clearly again, the argument that they are putting forward makes no sense. And I think in all the meetings, we have told them that if we had said this outside, people will spit on our faces no? for having listened to this kind of logic. No? Uh, and I think we made it clear that this is not going to sell and that your reputation is at stake. No? Uh, the permanent secretary mentioned that uh, on the, the first uh, statement that the CCTV footage is a uh, blur and uh, we cannot uh, see clearly but on the other uh, on the other hand after we are talking for uh, 10 or 15 minutes he mentioned that uh, it is clearly that uh, somebody is uh, voluntarily come to the uh, the other car not by force no one force him so with a contradiction a statement like this after what he mentioned that uh, Lao is not like uh, Malaysia or Philippines or uh, Indonesia which is uh, in uh, high technology progress we still here uh, not uh, good enough in, uh, in, in, in uh, the technology uh, condition so we come to the conclusion that they, they still cover the, this, uh, this, uh, this um, matter what just happened to uh, Mr. Hombat and not telling us the truth. Uh, let me clarify uh, what um, um, Lily uh, Wahida said. Um, as we said earlier, there was a contradiction between the claims of a number of members we met um, who said that there was no evidence that Hombat was in the pickup truck uh, that came. Uh, after he was asked to be in the police station and the assertion of the permanent secretary uh, that Sombat there is no evidence uh, I mean that and that Sombat voluntarily uh, went into the truck so that we felt was uh, was a significant uh, sort of contradiction uh, in terms of because on the one hand there is a claim that there is no evidence that he entered the truck and then on the other hand there is an assertion that somebody voluntarily entered the truck so I, I, I do not think that this was um, a language translation problem because we were speaking in English although I would open up that possibility Good morning. I'm Emerlyn Hill from the International Commission of Jurists. I have a couple of questions, um, one related to, a to certain facts and perhaps um, on follow-up. Um, regarding the police personnel that appeared in the CCTV, were they identified? And if yes, are they now being um, subject of investigation? And are charges being filed against them? And then also I'd like to ask if um, there are legal steps being taken by Sompath's family on this case. And um, my third question is, um, what are the next steps for your delegation after this mission? Well, um, we, because we were wrapped up in asking a number of questions, we did not ask about you know, what happened to the police personnel. Uh, all we were told is that uh, right after the incident, um, um, the family of Sombat went to look at the CCTV and they were allowed access to the CCTV um, and they were allowed to film the film, uh, so to speak. Uh, but that um, the next day, uh, when they went back again, they were no longer allowed access to the CCTV. As to what happened with respect to the police personnel, we were not able to ask that um, question. Um, with respect to the um, further steps of Sombat's family, I, uh, I do not think we are uh, in a position to answer that uh, 
question uh, at this point because uh, it, is, uh, it is something that we did not really discuss uh, with them. But with respect to further steps, uh, um, the um, Lily Wahid has, has enumerated a number of steps that she might want to repeat. The first step, I suggest to uh, Charles and, uh, and uh, Warren that uh, we have to collect uh, the signature of a uh, member of parliament if, uh, in each our country, and then we make a official report to the human right, the ASEAN human right head office in Jakarta. And then uh, afterward, we maybe discuss with, uh, with the commission what will uh, what what kind of step we will take in the future? Let me say uh, three things before I leave. First is uh, in our meetings with the three different uh, groups of people, we impressed upon them that uh, the highest level of uh, um, police officers involved should be giving uh, immediate briefing to the family of Sombat in terms of what has actually transpired. Uh, from the time he was picked up and the level of investigation or the status of investigation at this time. Because um, uh, Mr. Sambad is now uh, dealing with the most junior, most junior officers right now and she has no idea what is happening. So the recommendations that we have made, one uh, is uh, to get the highest officer, either with the police or the military, to inform her of the status of the investigation. This is something that we also impressed with other members of the civil society and the diplomatic corps uh, where, who we met. Also, uh, the second point is that um, we, when we met the National Assembly, we asked the National Assembly to exercise independence. Though. I mean, exercise independence and push the government to fast track the investigation. Uh, in a case like this, uh, where it has taken one month, uh, it's too long. Uh, from what I understand that uh, from human rights circles, that the longer the person doesn't surface, means that the person will no longer surface anymore. Uh, so it is really important and urgent that the government fast tracks the investigation uh, uh, urgently and not to, uh, you know, pussyfoot the issue. Uh, and third, the um, government was also told that um, they have to expand their investigation from the civilian realm to the military realm. Uh, because it appears that the military is responsible for this. Uh, and therefore, these are the three things that was impressed upon them uh, at all the, all the meetings that we have had. Before, before we proceed, uh, sorry, we have how many people wants to, just want to know. So two, can we group the questions to get a yeah. tree and can then we have one round of answer together. So yeah, please uh, It's Gwen Robinson from the Financial Times. I just wanted to ask also, um, in looking forward, there's a lot of, um, you know, clearly a lot of senior diplomats like ambassadors in Vientiane who are very concerned and considering the next steps as well. You've got countries like Australia that are currently working on a, a big new aid package for Laos. Do you think it's come to the point without, I mean, it's been a month, um, they, they haven't finished their investigation, but has it come to a point where you think um, government should take stronger action, for example, hold into um, question further aid funds or um, use some pressures like that? Has it come to that point? Well, um, let me just say that we can only really uh, speak about, the, uh, about ASEAN and our uh, recommendations uh, for ASEAN. I believe that, uh, yes, a number of other countries are involved and have spoken out uh, strongly uh, on this. I, I believe the uh, diplomatic community in, 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 in Laos has um, have spoken out strongly on this. It's no secret that uh, the ambassador from Singapore, the ambassador from Germany, uh, and the um, representatives of the European community, the Swiss ambassador, have uh, articulated their very strong um, uh, concerns, um, but we uh, are not aware that there is uh, a move uh, to cut off or to um, 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 
whether this would affect the continued flow of aid funds. We are not aware uh, of any uh, country at this point that would be um, um, speaking about that. Uh, what we are aware of is that we were told that um, Secretary of State Clinton is about to issue a statement uh, today uh, on the disappearance of uh, Sombat. Uh, and so what we've heard about is mainly articulations of concern at this point in time. Uh, with respect to ASEAN, I, um, uh, it is our uh, collective opinion that, um, that the ASEAN countries and governments um, uh, should be issuing statements at this point um, because of the concern that, as we said earlier, Sombat is not only um, uh, a Laotian, he is also a member of the ASEAN community, and because his disappearance really reflects badly on ASEAN, even as we are moving towards uh, a community. So uh, we are going to be telling our governments and our parliaments, and as Lily has said, we will be circulating a letter that will seek the signatures of all parliamentarians that um, uh, we ask the government of Laos to please speed up this situation and to make sure that Sombat surfaces because it is in the interest of all of ASEAN that this happens. Uh, I think we made it very clear to the government that it is our opinion that while we respect the national sovereignty of Laos and we would not interfere with their legal processes, at the same time, they should realize that this is now an ASEAN affair and therefore we have a very strong interest in an appropriate resolution of the case and in Mr. Sombat's surfacing fairly quickly. I believe that message got through to our friends in Laos. Dr. Walden Bello, uh, Lily Wahid, and uh, Charles Santiago, we appreciate very much for your effort going to Laos. And I would like to inform this meeting today that yesterday uh, 18 MPs from the Thai Parliament have signed demanding that the uh, question of um, disappearance of Mr. Sumbat uh, be revealed uh, to the public what has happened. Um, I think what, what, we're, what we're seeing now is, is a rapid uh, commercialization of a subsistence socialist society into uh, transforming very quickly uh, from Thai investment, investment from China, um, and transforming the society into a fully agricultural society. Uh, Mr. Uh, well, Bello, you understand that uh, the the effects, the impacts uh, on the people would be tremendous on this. And uh, Lao, being a centralized uh, society, uh, it does not have um, people's representation uh, at all. In fact, even in Thailand, when we have a more or less a working parliament, and yet in the year 2004, up to uh, this year, uh, people who are active uh, on the communities trying to save their lands and their uh, environment and resources have been, have been literally killed. About 30 have, have been killed, not disappeared. In Thailand, we do not make people disappear. We just fill them full of holes and leave them with, with witnesses. Uh, I'm afraid so Mr. Sombat's uh, uh, <coughs> disappearance uh, will be that of a permanent one. Uh, there have been other incidents in which uh, opposition uh, Lao Laosian from the United States have visited Thailand and the whole family were uh, assassinated inside Thailand. We believe that this is a, 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 a practice that is uh, very, very a tragic and if it continues um, like this um, what we'll, we'll see it's it's a uh, very very uh, concerned image of Laos as a member of the ASEAN 
now, as you know, uh, the most controversial uh, uh, events are taking place in, in Laos. And that is uh, the fifth, probably, biggest dam is going to be built in Laos uh, on the lower Mekong River, a gigantic, probably one of the biggest uh, dams that's ever be going to be built. The controversy that is caused over this uh, it's, it's huge, but inside Laos there is absolutely no opposition to it because of the conditions of authoritarianism. Now, uh, I fear that uh, there is some sort of a connection to this, and uh, I must say and admit as a Thai that all the uh, investments, may they be the uh, Nam Ngum, one, Nam Gum, two, Nam, Nam Turn, one, Nam, uh, Nam Turn, two, and including this uh, ongoing uh, Sayaburi project. It's all financed by Thai and Thai banks and Thai construction and Thai corporate interests and Thai uh, <coughs> insatiable uh, need for uh, energy uh, that is putting uh, Laos on the brink of disaster, uh, social disaster. Uh, tens of thousands of people have been removed and there's no representation, no news coming out at all from, 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 from Laos due to all these uh, 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 projects. So it is uh, of, of uh, our interest here, uh, 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 people in, 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 the, uh, in the panel, that uh, this has to be looked into as a, um, one of the causes or, or important causes of disappearance. Uh, of Mr. Sombat. I do not think I Sombat is the only one. I believe that there were others too. And uh, uh, I take my hat off to your efforts. Uh, your, uh, your going there, it's, it's really uh, should be our, our job from Thailand. But uh, as you know, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, we are almost uh, the same of ethnic origin. Uh, we tend to uh, uh, be shy on, on this, but this matter has has uh, uh, has antagonized uh, a lot of intellectuals uh, who is the, in the 70s uh, were all in Laos. Everybody that uh, opposed dictatorship uh, had to flee. The uh, coup in Thailand uh, were accepted in Laos as political refugees. And in fact, this amenity and uh, amicable uh, feeling between two countries is, is being eroded uh, with this e uh, event. And I'm, I'm very sad about this, but uh, I, we congratulate uh, uh, Mr. Walden and, and, and Lily for, for bringing us this, uh, this, uh, this news from, from Laos, although it's a tragic one. Thank you. Thank you, uh, I agree with you that, and then you know more than me that uh, about the Lao, the condition in Lao, because uh, you are uh, so near with Lao. And we also afraid that uh, that matter uh, happened to somebody, but uh, so far with no. Uh, with no information from the their government, we cannot. Uh, we still cannot. Um, we still uh, has to believe that uh, so much still uh, in the safe because uh, yesterday the secretary, the permanent secretary, mentioned that uh, he uh, believed that somebody is uh, still alive, and also because uh, he mentioned about the cross line several times. I think they know what really happened with uh, with Sombat, but they don't, they, they, uh, in my opinion, maybe in such a country like like Laos, someone uh, being picked up by the the government and then brainwashing and the other, yeah, maybe happened to Sombat. But uh, I do believe with the statement of the uh, of the permanent secretary. Uh, Somebody's still alive. 
because uh, of course in the uh, in the country like uh, Laos the power of the party the ruling party cannot be uh, denied that, uh, and the uh, foreign ministry is a uh, minister is uh, the member of the Politburo so I think uh, uh, somebody but still left and this is uh, of course depend also to our pressure to to them not only to the government but to the party the ruling party well, thank you very much to uh, Senator Kaisak we as you can see we're attaching a lot of importance to the statement of the um, permanent secretary that he thinks that somebody's still alive and certainly uh, we hope that uh, we hope that that was a statement of fact rather than a wish uh, in this situation. Um, we we um, would like to say that yes, um, we have heard um, and we have read about the controversies over the dams in 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 Laos and the controversies over the land issues. Uh, and um, we, we ourselves are very concerned about this, uh, but um, we um, let me just say that our own governments um, are certainly not um, uh, models of rule, and we made it very clear to the authorities in Laos that our governments, uh, the Philippines, uh, Indonesia. Um, we have many problems with respect to um, democratic rights and human rights that um, disappearances have taken par uh, place in our country and by no means are we saying that um, we are holding up our countries as models because they are not. But we did say that um, it is very important for all of us in ASEAN to be concerned about the democratic development of our countries because we are all part of the ASEAN community and that the advances of one reflects on all and the failures of one reflect on all. We are taking the um, uh, Lao, Lao PDR's um, um, assertion um, that uh, it is um, a democratic government. I certainly am taking that and that there is a separation of powers. Uh, and indeed, the point of view from which we started this mission was that um, this, that there is a striving for uh, transparency, there's a striving for um, a, separ a real separation of powers. We, we, we took this for granted. This aspiration is where we started from, which is the reason that we uh, said to our counterparts in the National Assembly that if we are to act as real parliamentarians, it is your duty uh, to be able to take the executive into account and to push the executive branch of your government to a quick investigation uh, of this matter. Uh, and that this is what uh, separation of powers uh, is all about. And we were gratified that at the end of the meeting uh, with the members of the National Assembly, they did promise us that as parliamentarians, they would take the initiative to push the government uh, to rush this investigation. So we are holding very much hope with respect to this. So again, we take for grant, uh, we take at its face value the claim of the Lao PDR that it is a democratic state and that it is moving towards transparency and it is moving towards a separation of powers. And therefore, uh, because of that, uh, we are expecting behavior that in fact reflects these aspirations. Let me just say that that is uh, personal opinion. I will we take the aspirations, the realities might be different, but we certainly start from the Lao PDR's aspiration to be a democratic state. Hi, Phil Robertson from Human Rights Watch. 
I'm wondering if you had an opportunity to speak to representatives of the UN country team while you're in Vientiane. Uh, I'd like to know whether you, uh, you've gotten a sense of what the UN country team is trying to do there. Uh, I also understand that there's been some communications by various special rapporteurs to the Lao government. Uh, did that come up in any of your conversations or did any sort of uh, technical assistance issues related to like UN assisting with the investigation come up in your discussions? Uh, informally speaking, um, we were told that the UN uh, country team has taken a very strong interest in the matter. We were not informed specifically of what measures there have been. Uh, uh, last uh, uh, Sunday, uh, Monday afternoon, we, um, we had a meeting uh, with a number of different um, agencies. Uh, and um, the head of the U.S. country team unfortunately left the meeting before the end of our presentation, so we were not able to speak directly to him. Of course, I think that uh, uh, first we make a contact with the Asian Human Rights uh, Commission, and afterward maybe uh, the next step with the uh, UN Commission on these uh, uh, issues. And of course, we cannot uh, make a step uh, by us alone, but we have to, to, to work hand in hand together in ASEAN because uh, this is a very important thing that we can uh, make the democracy uh, executed uh, uh, completely in, uh, in Laos. Nirmal Ghosh from the Straits Times. Uh, regarding the ASEAN Human Rights Commission, it's been said that this is a test case for the ASEAN Human Rights Charter. And when you say you're going to make this representation to the Human Rights Commission in Jakarta, could you tell us, uh, both of you, uh, what kind of leverage, what kind of power does the Human Rights Commission have? What do you expect them to do? What do you recommend and what do you expect from the Commission? Thanks. Well, um, certainly, um, I, it, it's in my opinion that this will be a test case. Okay. And uh, we expect... Uh, uh, the Asian ASEAN Human Rights Commission to take this very seriously, to send an investigating team to Laos and to speak with the authorities and to speedily come up with its own investigation and the results of this investigation in the issue. So um, this is uh, a, a test case and if the a ASEAN Human Rights Commission responds positively to it, then it has a bright future but uh, if it does not respond to our requests, and we will make this very strongly, then um, uh, its future might indeed be, and credibility might be in jeopardy. So uh, let me just say that this is a test of the credibility of the ASEAN Human Rights Charter and the ASEAN Human Rights Commission. Our visit to Laos uh, two days ago, uh, it is just, uh, and we saw it as an, an urgent matter that we have to go there directly as soon as possible. Of course, we cannot do, uh, we, can do we cannot do something just uh, three of us, but we have to, to, to uh, work together with as especially the ASEAN Human Rights uh, Commission. Our recommendation, of course, that uh, the investigation must be uh, continue because um, we cannot just there for two days and we can get uh, many information. But uh, a team must be uh, sent there. And um, of course, further step is uh, will be discussed uh, in the human right, uh, ASEAN Human Rights Head Office by bo uh, three of us. Okay. Uh, if there is no further questions, I would like to request um, Dr. Bello and Madam Wahid if you have some concluding points uh, to make. Thank you very much for uh, your uh, attention and your cooperation with uh, our step to go to Laos for uh, the human right, uh, uh, the human right issue, because Laos is uh, 
I think in ASEAN is a very Lao Myanmar is still uh, need our help to 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 push the human right being uh, executed there, uh, and uh, of course the media uh, help is uh, completely important for uh, for this uh, this issue, so we can uh, synergize our our uh, our effort uh, for further. Uh, good condition in Laos. Well, let me end by saying that um, we spoke at length to Xu Meng Nang, the spouse of uh, Sombat Sompon. And um, we felt very greatly the high level of anxiety, um, concern, an absolute devastation of somebody who does not know what has happened to her husband. Uh, it is something that none of us have really experienced except vicariously. But um, how does it feel if you don't know whether your husband is alive or dead? Um, you don't know whether he's going to surface the next day or not? And if he is surfaced the next day, will he be alive or will he be dead? Uh, despite this, I think um, Ms. Nang is a very brave woman. Uh, she kept her feelings very much um, to herself, though she shared some of them with us. And she assisted us in every step of the way. Uh, and. I think this is something that is not usually possible for people who are directly involved in this appearance case. Uh, and, and so I would just like to, to end with that, that when we come right down to the basic human dimension of this, that is something that may be even us political people never really experience, but which this person is now undergoing, and she's her experience a microcosm of what happens to the victims and the families of disappeared people. Um, I would just like to also say that, um, again, um, the Lao government received us despite the short notice. It cooperated in the exchanges with us. Um, there was a sincere effort to try to answer our questions, uh, but that the questions, the answers we're, we received were far from uh, satisfactory. And I would just like to reiterate what Charles said and Lily had said that maybe a number of the people that we met and discussed, high though they be in the civilian government, really probably did not know the answer of where Sombat was us. But we are heartened by two things. One, our counterparts in the National Assembly said that they would take seriously their role as parliamentarians and push the executive to a quick investigation and resolution of this issue. Second, the word or the um, uh, acceptance of the permanent secretary that investigating whether or not other parts of the government or rogue elements within the government uh, were involved was a good suggestion was a good angle for an investigation. And I believe that he said that seriously. Now, whether or not there is a follow through on this issue of looking at all angles, including possible high level government involvement, remains to be seen. Let me just express my hope that indeed this will be the case. And if that happens, then I believe that 
this will be a really um, something that all of us uh, in ASEAN um, would be um, extremely happy about uh, if this step were taken. At, uh, in conclusion, I would just like to thank all of those that uh, AAPF that made the trip possible, uh, as well as the um, diplomatic offices in um, Vientiane that assisted us um, in terms of the logistics of contacting our friends in the Lao government. I would just like to specially mention the Philippine Embassy's uh, support for the um, contacting members of the Lao government um, and of course the very supportive um, um, atmosphere that we received from the uh, diplomatic community in, in, in Vientiane. So with that, uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, being with us here today. And as I said, uh, there's a statement that we, I did that is available for everybody in the front desk. Thank you.